sidekicks here. I have temporarily reverted to the um, default back. As you can see, I've done some work out of sight. Again, the default pack makes the cobble and hardstone so much more different. Um, so obviously I'll have to change these out and these out. Um, I've got a little bit of a problem with my canopy. There's stuff on the other side of the wall, so changing that, uh, moving that over will be an issue. So I'll have to decide what to do about that, if anything. So, I don't actually recall what I had done by the end of the last video, so I'm going to give you a quick tour. Um, that painting is kind of a random replacement of the one I had on there. Got the double bed, we've got the canopy, skylight, a couple sofas, a little reading area here. Um, may give it more light at some point, so reading at night isn't so bad. Out here, we've got the sapling as a bit of decorative hoo-ha. Slap a torch up there. Um, I have changed my back exit, so this was a long secret tunnel. Not secret, but uh, we went down the stairs from the main room and there was a branch to this um, bolt hole kind of exit and another branch down to the mine. I've now recreated the mine entrance outside and made this the back door to the entire thing. As this was created sort of on the fly, it still has artifacts of its uh, impermanent nature. So I will be replacing the dirt, and that probably doesn't need to live there. The kitchen, I think, is more or less as I left it. We've got the refrigerator, we've got the storage box here, we've got the cabinets, which still look pretty good in this texture. The signs kind of blend in. I may have designed them differently if they were what um, what I had. Um, nothing particular I should be doing here. Let me bake some cobblestone. If I have another batch of cobble somewhere. My stuff is glowstone. I meant to use that somewhere. I don't my stuff is scattered badly for a variety of reasons, none of which are particularly interesting. So, that's not cobble. This is cobble. And I've added a whole new room. You may have noticed coming up, we've got this little gardeny thing. Um, I planted a tree. This area was completely unused and I couldn't think of a single thing to do with it. We have more green dye. I left a bit of the rug out. Um, so more or less on a whim, I planted me a tree and some posies. There's some lime wool, which is the light green. one more dark green bit of wool. Finish that room. Oh crap, that was supposed to be black wool. That's why... <laughs> I don't have any black dye. I did, however, hit a black sheep. Some of my best friends are black sheep. Okay, so in addition to the little garden, here's the incinerator, which uh, I, honestly I don't recall if I've shown it to you. Um, so there's a bit of lava down there. If I pitch my crap in there, it goes away. Absolutely not necessary. If you throw it on the ground, it'll eventually despawn. I created a bathroom. We've got the tub. We've got a lever representing the uh, shower head, I guess. Um, the sort of skylight filled in with tree. There was a sp 
specific reason for that, I can't remember. The uh, shower enclosure and glass. The light is a jack o' lantern. Again, the shower head. This is lower than the floor because we've got sandstone tile or uh, half block. It was about something above, didn't look right. Uh, this this texture pack doesn't really show, but this is a mirror. It, well, it's a steel block. Uh, this is supposed to be the toilet. It does not look right uh, with this cobble, but it does in mine. That's the best I could come up with for, the, for a handle, uh, although I also gave it a button. And a little magazine reading rack, which is a half-buried uh, bookshelf. That's what I've done inside, and I think this place, aside from a little bit of fine-tuning, is done. I think the temple is done, the hobbit house is done, the director's uh, house, cottage is done, the obelisk is done, uh, there may be some things I can do down on the waterfront, in fact, I know there are. The asylum is definitely not done. Another thing that's new jump oof, is this little area. It's not a town, it's not a village. Fiefdom? I think I went uh, feudal. This fiefdom has a cemetery now. Which is something I've been planning to, to do since since I built the church, just to do a churchyard. And I put it kind of between the church and the asylum. I planted birch trees around it, of which one has already sprouted. I just planted them last night, Minecraft last night. The reason for that is, personally, birch trees are the tree of death. Because when I was a kid, I had bad allergies to many different kinds of trees, the worst being the white birch or, or paper birch. Give frame rate reduction there. Uh, to the point where, if I had walked up to one and like licked it or sniffed it or give, you know given myself a good dose of it, I could have gone into anaphylactic shock and died. Uh, which my parents, in their wisdom question mark did not tell me not sure why of course I never did lick a tree and die so it all worked out I've made this uh, fence with uh, uh, alternating skipped rail I think it has a very Japanese sort of feel uh, and I put this block in the middle so that I could actually put a sign on it a little hard to make out, it says St. Sparks Cemetery, which is named after uh, a guy named Spark Chan, who's an artist out of Hawaii. Why? I'm not sure. I guess, again, it may be the, the Japanese influence, and I didn't want to say St. Chan, um, that seemed odd. So why I thought St. Spark was less odd is, is strange. These are the graves, uh, half blocks. Um, and full blocks. I might knock out the dirt underneath and put more stone under it. Not sure. I might swap this out for smooth stone. Again, in my texture pack, it looked fine. In this, not so much. Um, here lies Anna Prin, 1883 to 1916. Jane Aragorn, wife and mother, 1860 to 1916. Baby Alice Snee, 1914 to 1916. R.I.P. Ernest So, 1862 to 1916. R.I.P. Daniel Chang, 1892 to 1916. Here lies Martha Evergreen, 1896 to 1916. R.I.P. Wallace Jantz, 1901 to 1916. You may notice a pattern. Everyone in this area died in 1916, or at least a whole bunch of them.
and they're all buried together here. And Father, or Frater, brother, Spark, 1826 to 1916, rest in peace for our sake. The uh, fiefdom is getting a little bit of backstory. And the bits I enter, I don't necessarily know what they mean. Uh, getting dark already. I'm going to take a nap in the hobbit hole and possibly... on expanding the swamp. I think I should go to the asylum next and start hashing that out. In which case, I could have gone to the asylum to sleep. Let's see what the painting in here looks like. It's, um, house on the beach. Sleeping now. I'm on peaceful mode. I do periodically go off peaceful mode. Um, oh, what's in there? Ladder. I can always use ladder. Was there? Uh, this uh, building is also the only one that doesn't have a back door of some sort. Uh, so I'm thinking of uh, tunneling out the back. Why don't I do that now? Uh, is that a crafting bench? It is. Do I have sticks and or wood? I do not. I was going to make me a shovel. Um, all right, I'm going to cut down a tree depending on how far I have to burrow, the amount of time difference um, between using a shovel and using my fists, or like a block of wool, uh, is, is sufficient to be worth it. If I'm just knocking down one tree, it doesn't seem to be worthwhile to make an implement specifically for that. And unless I'm clearing land, I will replant. Sometimes add another. Uh, this was fairly bare. It's slowly becoming forested. I come from the state of Maine, which is known as the Pine Tree State. And for obvious reasons, um, the state is just covered with pine trees, which are um, a large part of the industry that keeps the place going. You may think of Maine as a home of lobster such, um, but if you look at a map, you'll see very little of Maine is actually on the coast. The pine trees, uh, and potato farming actually, uh, are very big, part of our, um, not only our, our economy, but our sort of sense of what the state's about. And the, I won't say ironic, but the interesting thing about that is that those weren't there when the settlers first came. They were planted. They were planted for shipbuilding. I wonder how far I have to go before I come outside somewhere. Uh, they were planted for shipbuilding purposes, for masts. Periodically, we have people protesting. I guess it's funny. Uh, periodically, we have people protesting the uh, decimation of the trees. Uh, you know, the natural goodness of our state is being threatened. Uh, which, you know, I love the pine trees. They are part of the place I grew up in. Uh, but they are not indigenous to the state. Yes, that might be ironic. I might not... This is fairly long. Let me see. I believe firmly that the uh, nature of the place you grew up in, the, the actual land, affects the personality of the people. Oh goes into a hillside and will go forever. Well, not forever, obviously. So, as I say, I grew up in Maine, and just over the border is New Hampshire. Now, 
Maine originally was a part of Massachusetts, which oddly enough skipped over um, the state of New Hampshire. Maine is full of pine trees. New Hampshire has some pine trees. However, uh, it is known as the Granite State, again for fairly obvious reasons. Yeah, that was easy, wasn't it? And the um, state of New Hampshire is just filled with granite cliffs and mountains, which I personally find somewhat oppressive to be around. And the personality of New Hampshireites, um, in my opinion, is uh, a lot more, uh, we'd say, laconic than than their neighbors. I don't want that one there. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a town named Laconia. That, in case you're unfamiliar with the word, means essentially not someone who talks a lot. I'm not sure why this requires a little turf hut at the top, but clearly it does because I built one. So the personality of New Hampshireites and Mainers uh, are distinct and recognizable, at least to us. Um, and of course we may be fooling ourselves, but so be it, if so. And I've also lived in San Diego, California. Very different climate. Um, interestingly, it also uh, has a tree that uh, a big deal is made of, well, not a big, big deal, that is not native, and that was planted by uh, shipbuilders. The eucalyptus tree turns out to have been a bad idea because while in Australia, so the story goes, and I can't actually verify this, uh, in Australia the eucalyptus tree grows fairly straight and actually can be used for shipbuilding. In California, for some reason, I don't know, possibly having to do with winds, the, um, the eucalyptus tree grows very crooked and twisty and is utterly, utterly, use utterly useless for shipbuilding. Now, the guy who imported them at great personal cost uh, was understandably distraught, I guess, um, upset, and felt that the eucalyptus tree had no use. So he burned them. He burned the grove. Now, an interesting fact about the eucalyptus tree is that it propagates through fire. There are a lot of trees like that. They have to have um, a forest fire periodically. Uh, or they won't actually grow new ones. They won't actually grow seeds. Uh, and so the eucalyptus population grew quite a bit that day. In fact, and you know this is secondhand information, uh, so I can't verify it, but uh, I have been told that if you saw uh, the right sort of map, various vegetation, you would be able to see a great swath across the state um, that pretty much shows where the prevailing winds were that day. As I say, um, Californians are distinctly different, hugely different from uh, New Hampshireites and Mainers point where even people from neither place could easily identify the difference. Uh, they are not mountainous, uh, they are not forested, and even the trees they do have are different. Um, they have some relatives of the pine, but they're large and prickly. There's a tory pine, uh, which is protected, so protected in fact that if you plant one, you are not allowed to prune it. 
though you've planted it yourself. And the pine cones of the Tory pine are large and heavy and spiked, and I still bear a scar on my arm from one day I was sitting at a lecture at the local UU uh, church, um, which there at least is very broad-based kind of uh, establishment and not very churchy at all, and I don't remember what the lecture was about. But we were outside, and I was sitting under a Tory pine, and one of the cones dropped, and man, that hurt. Uh, and Southern California is beachy. Uh, and that will affect the personality of the people, even the ones that don't go to the beach. Um, this is my, my thesis, at least. Uh, and... terrain I'm building here is going to have a different sort of people altogether. Um, and one of the reasons I'm building the forest is uh, they're going to be uh, a closed-mouthed people. And while prairie settlers probably shared that quality, um, my personal experience is uh, that forest people are more likely to be very closed-mouthed certain personality that comes from living on the edge of wilderness, uh, that comes from uh, having, at least historically, if not currently, wild animals that might come out of the woods in their backyard. And if you go to Maine, a lot of residents who aren't downtown uh, do have uh, wild wood in their backyard say wildwood, meaning it's not cultivated, it's not um, particularly tame, uh, you'll still find animals in there that you, you know, you wouldn't necessarily expect. We don't have wolves, um, we don't have a coyote to speak of, uh, though we do have what we call koi dogs, which are uh, feral dogs, uh, koi because they're supposed to have interbred with coyote. Don't know if that's actually true. That may be urban legend. Um, but in my mom's backyard, you can still occasionally see moose, which are huge, uh, you know, bigger than cars and trucks, uh, and still can sometimes daintily move through a tight forest. Currently, I live in Utah, Salt Lake City. Utah, again, is really different from the other three places I've lived. Two places? The other places I've lived. Um, so there's the prevailing uh, religion of Mormonism, and that has a huge effect on, on the persona of the population. Uh, but even more so, being uh, a mountainous desert land, I believe, creates a very uh, different sort of uh, cultural personality. Now, individuals will differ, always, in any population. Uh, but there's sort of a bell curve going. There's sort of uh, the, the group personality forms. And uh, so Utahns uh, come across as very nice. They keep to themselves. They have a, a, a hospitality code that they honor. Um, and um, they, they're just very controlled, I guess. Salt Lake City is kind of the exception, even though it's the capital. In Utah, when kids grow up and they need to get away from family, because they're a bit different or a bit rebellious, uh, this is where they wind up. Of course, obviously some people go further away. But Salt Lake City is full of artists and uh, punks. There's the movie SLC Punk. That's about the punk scene here. That is not a painting I would have put up.
which leads to uh, a sort of general populist persona uh, here in Salt Lake City. Wow, I don't like this texture. Um, it certainly would have made this place look differently if I had been using this texture. Uh, so it's, it's very outsider, um, kind of edgy, full of hipsters, which um, if you hate hipsters, then may not be the place for you. Uh, it's become quite fashionable to uh, mock hipsters these days. Which I'm not saying they necessarily shouldn't. They're not necessarily mockable. Uh, but any subculture will have funny clothes and unfamiliar music. So I'm just sort of wandering around, kind of having fun talking to you. I'm trying to decide what to do next. What I normally like to do is decide before I start. Now, you will see very little evidence of that from watching my videos, because sometimes I forget what I was going to do. Why did I put a redstone there? Um, and also, sometimes what I decide I want to do for the day seems to me that it might be dull. And that's sort of what happened today. I actually did make a video of the process of making the bathroom and the cemetery, uh, but it just seemed to me really dull. And of course, I've exchanged it for nothing happening. That's not a lot better. I think I want to... Oh, I will fall to my death. Using the shift key and not caps lock keep doing. I'm going to come up here and get a better look at it. See if I want to put a balcony underneath or something like that, some way to view it from outside, because it's really quite high up and not necessarily something you can see from a distance, which was my hope. I had hoped it would be very visible. So I made these videos, and they just seemed really dull. Um, and I figured I would benefit just as much, or at least you would benefit just as much, from having me show you the finished project um, and describing how I made it. The, um, the checkered tile in the bathroom uh, I think fairly obviously is, is dyed wool. Sandstone half block for the floor. Uh, and so again I'm, I'm uh, filming and scattered and not sure what I want to do. If you let me know what I, what you would like to see me do, um, I would do it, probably. Um, I would even explode things or set them on fire as long as I had a chance to uh, save the game, save the map, because I put a lot of work into this stuff. But I'm going to continue to build this community. And I think I would like to turn it into a, an adventure map at some point. A story map, I guess. It just takes on more and more life every day. I really have only three complete homes. I may uh, build another home, maybe in the next project. Uh, I mentioned last time the idea of building a labyrinth. A uh, Not a classical labyrinth, like the one I made near the churchyard, but a labyrinth of the type you would see perhaps in the movie Labyrinth. Very little chance I will make something that big, and uh, there is zero chance I can make something that's a replica, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it has moving parts. Oh, we're missing Walter Freeman. That's weird. Um, the interior of the maze isn't necessarily going to match the uh, the maze as seen from outside. And three, there are magical bits. If you recall Sarah uh, in her first visit, her first moment, uh, had this long straight path. And ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and ran ran and ran and ran and at the risk
risk of being a bit, um, I don't know, naughty. That scene is probably where a lot of young men of my generation and young ladies first started to appreciate breasts. <laughs> that light white shirt she was wearing as she ran. So I shan't be creating an exact replica, but I would like to create a, a labyrinth of that sort. This is intended to be meditative, not to get you lost. And I actually had a memory uh, from the movie, I'm going to watch it again, uh, probably tonight, of, uh, do you remember that stone that looked like Jared, Jareth, um, from one angle, but then when the camera panned to one side, it was just three or four stones in front of each other. That would be neat to recreate. Um, that would be a challenge, and considering the blockiness of Minecraft, it would have to be fairly large scale. More sheep. I'm actually approaching a time when I maybe don't need wool so much. Although I still have a lot of interior walls to put into the asylum. So I guess uh, on the plate for future visits are uh, putting more interior into the asylum, building a new home, or starting work on a labyrinth. Uh, and, oh, more birch trees are up. I'm going to do all of these things. Whether I'm going to do them in front of you or not is another question entirely. So I guess this one was mostly a tour. I didn't actually do anything. Uh, but even so, I think it may have been more interesting than watching me do all this. Um, and also because I'm a bit disorganized, I spent a lot of time going back and forth. What's in the storage over here? Oh, I need some glass. Oh, I need to get some sand. Um, where did I leave the dye? I need more cactus. Um, I don't have any bone meal, so I've got to uh, turn peaceful off just before dawn and see if I can't catch some wild bone. Uh, last time I turned peaceful off and I walked out, there were seven creepers within view. Um, and I've actually filled in a few craters out here. Because um, I'll face them down if there's nothing that they can destroy, uh, aside from me. And I've killed my armor entirely by bouncing off cactus. I'm going to take a quick view of the floating island. I expanded it a bit and planted more trees on it. Yep, it looks bigger and tree -ear. Uh I still want to do more with that. I want to make it more multi-level. This is only so much I can add from the very top. I'm going to try and make some scaffolding and add maybe a lower level down here. Oh, pardon me. Uh, and I also have... Uh, I started a little tunnel in the back of the boathouse. I don't know where that should go, though. I want to do something in the water. I may do a, an underwater thing someday. Uh, I've seen some, and they look neat. Look how the water's flowing from where I uh, knocked out the old pier. Weird. Okay, so... Uh, and I've recently learned that these, you can actually knock out the entire support once the fountain started. I may do that later. Um, this is the view I'll end you with. I do hope you enjoy watching these. Uh, so far I've had, I think, 11 is the highest uh, viewership for the most recent videos. Um, although I think the first Minecraft video I did got up to almost 50. Uh, so I hope folks are watching or will watch, or will find me when searching for a uh, Minecraft bathroom, or something like that. Uh, and as the town, or the fiefdom develops, um, I hope to tell more of the story. What happened in 1916. There's a link between that date and the asylum. A little browsing on Wikipedia um, may give you some hints. Um, our buddy Walter Freeman, on the asylum, the year 1916.